What is up, everyone? I'm Ryan from Fireside Knicks with my friend and co-host Dylan Backer, and we're talking about the lottery. You know, the Knicks, unfortunately, they were one pick away, really, from having a first-round pick. Um, you know, that sucks, obviously, because it would it could have been, you know, anywhere in that 15 to 11 range. Um, and, you know, yet it's not like the Knicks were – we're not entirely sure if the Knicks are going to draft someone, but having that asset is still having that asset. Um, so definitely sucks for the Knicks, but – Definitely not the end of the world or anything like that. Nothing that's, you know, heartbreaking or, you know, earth shattering. This isn't like, you know, a situation where the Knicks were in contention to get Webb and Yama or anything like that. That's not really the situation we're talking about here. Uh, but it would have been nice to have that first round pick. But with that being said, all of that underway, um, you know, it definitely adjusts what the Knicks plans are for this offseason. Nothing dramatic, but, you know, there was a question mark about whether they would have that pick or not. Um, and, you know, we're here to talk about, you know, where the Knicks are going to go from here. Like, w- what's their draft strategy? If they're going to really trade into the first round or not, whether they should. Um, and all that stuff. But with that being said, Dylan, how are you feeling today, my friend? And, you know, what are your thoughts on the Knicks draft situation now without that first round pick? Right. So, I mean, you know, obviously they didn't get the the Mavs pick that we were all hoping they were going to get. You know, honestly, coming into the season, I don't think anybody expected, you know, the Knicks to be able to get that pick, at least in the lottery. And then it ended up becoming down that close. And then the Mavs ended up being able to keep their pick. So, yeah, it stinks that the Knicks couldn't, couldn't hold on to it. You know, now they don't have a first round pick this year, at least as of right now, they don't. You know, this possibility still arises. You know, maybe they could trade with another team to get a first round pick if they really want one. You know, but it's like you said before. It's not the end of the world. They didn't get the first. They didn't get that pick this year. You know, looking at it right here, they still have 10 first round picks from 2023 to 2029. They have them in their possession. Six of them are their own, you know, and they're from 2024 to 2027. And eight of those picks out of those 10 are available to trade. You know, that that's from looking at NickCentral.com right here that they post an article about it. So, you know, just looking at that, they still have a lot of assets to be able to move. They have a lot of picks, you know, but, you know, I won't necessarily rule out possibly them trading for a pick because, you know, the past few years have only showed us that this front office is kind of unpredictable when it comes to the draft. You know, I mean, last year we had the 11th pick and then they ended up trading it away and, you know, just ended added some more second round picks and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it ended up working out, you know, nobody was really that good, at least for us at that stage of the draft last year. There wasn't many good fits at that spot. You know, maybe one could have said we could have had like Jalen Duran or something like that. But, you know, we have Mitchell Robinson. He, he took a step forward this season. So, you know, Hindsight's twenty twenty, of course, but you know, so far it's worked out. You know, we ha- we point is though, still got a lot of assets to move. You know, we have contracts to also move, such as like Evan Fournier, Derek Rose. Those guys are going to probably be off the books this this off season. You know, I, I would at least expect that. I'd be kind of surprised if one or both of them are still there. You know, so just looking at that, you got those guys you can move, and you have all these trade, you have all these draft picks that you still own, despite not getting the first pick this year or first round pick, I should say. They weren't getting the first overall pick, <laughs> but you know, just looking at that. They, they're not they're not in a bad spot. They're not in a bad spot. And the fact that they made the postseason and made the second round, not only does it make them make them an attractable destination for the already established stars and free agents that are on the trade block or in the free agent market, but now you have this leverage because you still have all these picks to move around. So surely regardless, this should be an active offseason. You know, I we obviously don't know where it's gonna go just yet. I mean it's still I mean, it's been less than a week for this off for this Knicks off season. You know, they just got eliminated. You know, their the front office is still probably trying to just process that and see what they you know, kinda what they really want really want to improve on in the coming seasons. But when it comes closer to draft night, I feel like we'll know a little bit more about what their plans are for the draft. The draft is still like a good month away. But, you know, right now, I could, I honestly don't know what to expect. I don't know what to expect. They could trade with another team for a first-round pick if they really want one and use it for leverage to, you know, for more trades with established players, make a big splash move. Or they might not do that. Maybe they'll just use the picks they have currently right now in their possession because they still have a lot. They still have one of the higher amounts of those in the league right now. You know, making those moves in the past years have so far paid off. So, I'm looking forward to it. It should be an interesting offseason. What what are your thoughts on, like, you know, the Knicks draft picks and stuff like that and what they have in their possession right now? Yeah, so, you know, the Knicks have done a really good job, I feel like, of getting really good value from whatever picks they've had, right? Like, you know, Miles McBride, I believe, was a second-round pick. Um, you know, Emmanuel quickly, obviously late first round pick Quentin Grimes, a later first round pick. Um, I don't say late as in like, you know, last pick of the first round, but still towards the back end of that first round, um, you know, getting those three players with the three picks you had in those situations is mightily impressive. Right. And I think you can agree with me here. That's getting more than what you bargained for. Right. Um, you know, did they miss on Obi Toppin? Yeah. But did the process of drafting Obi Toppin make sense at the time? Also, yes. You know, people forget as much as Tyrese Halliburton, like, yeah, I wanted Tyrese Halliburton at the time. 
the Knicks, one, ended up still getting a pretty good point guard in Emmanuel Quickly. And number two, they were going best player available, right? Uh, Julius Randle was not the star player or the all-NBA player he has been over the last three years. Um, and we weren't aware of the fact he was capable of it. So the Knicks rightly, you know, went out and drafted the best player they could um, and ended up being Obi Toppin. That was really their only miss in recent years, right? Um you know, you mentioned, you know, could the Knicks have got, kept Duran or whatever it may be, but I, I'd say, honestly, not that Hartenstein's a better talent than Duran, but I don't think the gap in terms of considering what their roles would have been because he would have been the backup big, I don't think the gap in performance would have been large enough um, to necessarily go and, you know, get upset about that. Um, you know, obviously there was a lot of talks about getting, uh, you know, a guard in the early parts of that draft last year. And, you know, not that Jaden Ivey, I think is someone to not, you know, have hope for, but I think the Knicks are a lot happier with Jalen Brunson. So, um, you know, it's one of those situations where the Knicks have not that the Knicks have had the best draft record in the world. Um, I understand that, you know, they're, they haven't had, you know, it's not like they've drafted a superstar level player, but given the picks they've had, they've done a lot with them and that's really all you can ask for. So, you know, I'm looking for, at them to maybe they can, uh, you know, move up in the second round and get an early second round pick or, you know, just use what they have to, to, to find some value. This team really isn't a team that's looking for a full-time starter in the draft either. Like, even if they had that number 10 pick, are they drafting a starter or are they drafting someone who play on the bench? So that's kind of a confusing thing as well um, for the Knicks. So I kind of wonder, you know, and I want to get your take on this. You know, do you feel like, not that the draft is important for the Knicks this year, but do you feel like the Knicks are just kind of at the point where they're like, hey, we'll acquire depth where you can acquire depth. But at this point, you're kind of just sitting and waiting for that real impact starter uh, to add, whether that's a superstar level player or not is, you know, up for debate. But it doesn't really feel like they are cont- they need to continue to build through the draft at this point. What do you think about that? Right. I mean, they, they definitely don't need to keep building through the draft. I mean, we're at a stage now where they need to kind of, you know, acquire that established talent or those star players to really elevate this team to that next level to where they can be a Eastern Conference Finals contender or even an NBA Finals contender. We've seen what this team was capable of this year, making the second round, and quite frankly, we're only two wins away from the Eastern Conference Finals, so it's not like they were that far off. You know, so clearly at this stage now, we're kind of past the, you know, draft a guy and develop him for a few years stage, and now we're at the stage where we're kind of like, all right, we need to get an established star that can help elevate this team, especially too, considering that the Knicks are a very young team. Average age is only like 24 years old or something like that. You know what I mean? So just looking at that, I mean, you know, they don't really need to go get like, you know, another young guy to develop for a few years. They already have a bunch of young guys that are still, they're still quite frankly, still developing, but are also, you know, a competitive basketball team. So now you kind of want to just, you know, level that up a little bit and kind of, you know, get that star player to mesh with Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle because, you know, I think we learned this season that, you know, they kind of have that all-star duo in Brunson and Randle. You know, obviously Randle's future, you know, maybe in question because, you know, of how he's performed in the playoffs. But, you know, thus far, it's been good. You know, we have, we have an, an elite duo. And, I mean, whether you like Randle or not, that's not disputable. They both average 24 points a game or more, which you don't get a lot of that out of many NBA teams. You know, I've seen someone even said this about Randle too, but, you know, 25 and 10 doesn't grow on trees. Someone's, I had seen someone on Twitter say that, and they're, they're right. You know, like, it doesn't grow on trees. You don't find many power forwards that get you that ability, right? So, you know, you want to keep that as much as you can and see if it works. You know, you have these guys attached to your team for a while. You know, Brunson's on a four-year deal. Barrett's on a four-year extension. Randall's on an extension. Mitchell Robinson's on a four-year deal. Your core is pretty much tied together for quite a while. You know, and this core helped you get to the playoffs. So now you have this core, you want to kind of add to it and add an established guy. You know, we've we've hinted at guys like maybe like OG Ananobi, who they almost got at the deadline, but didn't end up getting him. You know, Zach Levine is another guy. I know he's going to be really expensive, but he is someone the Knicks are going to probably have their eye on this offseason, so I would definitely keep an eye on him as well. You know, but you're, you're talking about guys like that. You're not talking about, like, young guys that are out of college that you're ready to look at the draft. No, they're past that. From the years, like, 2017 to 2020, we looked at the draft, and we had some of the worst luck possible. You know, we drafted Porzingis, who ended up getting hurt and then walking away and we had no playoff appearances 2018 drafted frank nilakina we all know that didn't work out 2019 was kevin knox that didn't work out 2020 was obi toppin you know that's you could argue that hasn't been working out you know so you know obviously then 2020 we had emmanuel quickly later first round that's worked out 2021 quentin grimes that's worked out and deuce mcbride as well we don't know much about mcbride just yet but you know for what it's worth it could work out with him. You know, it's, we have, we have the options, but point is 
you know, we're past that. We don't need to be looking at the draft anymore. You know, even if the Knicks had the 11th pick this year or 12th pick, whatever, even if they had a lottery pick this year, it's not, I'm not even sure if they would have used it to draft somebody, you know, they might've, they might've, and that would have been, I wouldn't have been, I would have been okay with it. I wouldn't have had an issue with it, but I do think they would have possibly wanted to use that for more trade bait, you know, use that as an additional piece to like, Hey, we have a high pick here. You know, we want this guy, you want this high pick and we'll take that guy off your hands and we'll take him, you know? So just looking at that, I feel like they would have wanted to do that more. I feel like they still want to with the picks they have right now. Currently, we obviously don't know what this front office is going to do. Cause like I mentioned, they can be very unpredictable. You know, they don't really go into the media a whole lot, obviously, as we know. So we never know what they're thinking. Really. We kind of just have to play the guessing game with that, but we just got to hope that's so, that they make the right decisions and, you know, don't dig us into a deep hole or something like that and keep us going on the upward trend. That's what we're really hoping for. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, it's just about doing, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the Knicks are not really a team that's historically gone out and been, you know, uh, a, they, as you mentioned, they don't really go out and say, hey, we're going to draft this guy. Um, you know, there was a lot, again, a lot of buzz around uh, Jaden Ivey and some talks about maybe the Knicks are going to trade up to grab him. But end of the day, am I really going to sit here and, uh, you know, criticize the Knicks for not trading for a guy uh, and instead going for it? Not, not necessarily, uh, you know, you won't, I don't, I understand he wasn't a superstar at the time or anything like that, but a more established NBA talent in Jalen Brunson, who is still young. It's not like Jalen Brunson's, you know, 32, 33, you know, that would be a little bit weird for the Knicks, um, but he's a young star. He's locked up for a while and he's proven to you that, you know, he's really good, right? Like if Jaden Ivey has the year that Jalen Brunson had this year, that's considered a successful, like, hey, he's succeeded. He has become the player that he's that you know we envision he could be. And Jalen Brunson is already that, right? Um, you know, there are going to be questions about what the Knicks do with their young core and w- which guys are traded and which guys are kept around. You know, but again, you're in a position where you know you've done well with what you've had for the most part. As you mentioned, a lot of those first round picks that you've mentioned have been you know from the old regime, so you know you don't want to hold that against Leon Rose. But um, you know, given what the Knicks have had, given what the Knicks have been dealt with in terms of picks um they've done a good job with it and that's that's all i can really that's all i really want them to do right you know get better value or meet your net value for the pick you're using right you know deuce mcbride could never get any better and he's probably better than the average second rounder right um and that means that means you've won that pick right i know that sounds trivial no it's not turning you know a guy a second round pick into a two-time mvp in like a Jokic type situation but you're still getting better than league average value right like you, there's there, there's a reason why Jokic's story is so unique because it just doesn't happen, right? Um, you know, or even a UDFA situation, right? Like you don't see a lot of Fred Van Vliet's out there, right? That's why they're oddities. That's why, you know, that it makes their stories interesting. Um, but, you know, even late first round picks, like Quinn and Grimes in year two is a reliable 3 and D guy, right? With upside. Emmanuel quickly was a six man of the year candidate as a late first round pick. Those are, those are, that's getting value. That's getting what you want um, out of those players and out of those picks. And I think they can do that still going forward. But with that being said, you know, I guess my last question here for you is, you know, if you're looking at the Knicks for future first round pick situation, because you were mentioning this uh, before you recorded, you know, can you remind the audience, you know, the position the Knicks are in with their pick situation and why we shouldn't really worry about not having this pick in particular because they're still in a pretty good spot. Right. So, you know, of course, not having this pick stinks. I'm sure all of us wish that we got that Mavericks pick because the Mavericks were, quite frankly, unexpectedly not that good this year and missed the playoffs. So I'm sure all of us were hoping we would get that pick just so we could have either a chance at drafting someone good or using that in a trade, which would have really been attracting because it's a lottery pick and teams love those lottery picks. But regardless, we are not in a bad position whatsoever. We still have a lot of draft picks to move move around and a lot of draft picks you know, in our arsenal that we have for the next several years. And a lot of them are first round picks, you know, and we have a bunch of second rounders as well. So just... We have a lot of things to move around. You know, it's not a doomsday scenario that we didn't get this particular one. You know, I'm sure a lot of Knicks fans would agree that, you know, it's not the not the end of the world we didn't get this, but you know, you really wish we did get it. I'm sure all of us did. It's unfortunate we didn't get this lottery pick last night from Dallas, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Got a lot of lot of assets to move, whether it's, you know, the players on the roster such as Fournier and Rose and you know, all the draft picks we have for the next several years, because we have a lot of them. You know, not many teams are blessed to have that many draft picks to move around. And then with the Knicks in the current position, they are as a competitive team and a young team. They're really set up for the future. They are really set up. This is their chance to jump on it and really jump on that star that may be disgruntled and may not want to stick around with their team anymore or jump on that uh, prize free agent uh, possibility. You know, just looking at all that, they really have a chance right here. You know, it's not the end of the world, not the end of the world whatsoever. Yes, we wish that they got that pick. Of course, we all do. But. Like I've been saying, 
it is not the end of the world. It's been the sentiment that everyone's been saying all season long. They have a lot of these picks to move. That's why they were so heavily mentioned the trade deadline talks. Unfortunately, nothing happened at the deadline. But it's the offseason now. You have a lot more time to work with. Something can happen. They can make a big move. They might go a little more low-key and pick more of like a role-player type guy. Who knows what they do? They might be waiting for that one guy, but clearly they're being patient with it. Clearly they're not trying to be desperate and just go and dump everything for a star level or superstar level player that won't work out here they want to find the right guy for this team and i respect that you know of course you know a lot of us knicks fans just want to be competitive right away and i get it we've been suffering for several years suffering decades but you know now that we're competitive again gotta remember it's a bit of a process here from getting to you know you became a competitive team you became a playoff team now your next step is to become a contender that's the next step you know, it's a process. It's not going to be a one-year thing, one-year turnaround, unless you're Phoenix, where you miss the playoffs completely in 2020, and then the next year somehow make the NBA Finals. You know, that doesn't happen a lot. You know, that's why you hear those kind of stories all the time of teams with a miraculous turnaround, because it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You know, most teams go through this process. You know, we've seen the Philadelphia 76ers attempt to do it. You know, obviously they might be in a tougher situation because, you know, James Harden today actually declined. His, is going to say he's going to decline his option. So he's going to end up becoming a free agent seeking a four-year deal. You know, so now he's available. And, you know, who knows what they're going to do with Embiid. They just fired their head coach. Philly's in a tough spot. But we see they tried to do that, you know, because that's how, that's how things work. You know, the league works like that. It's not going to be a one-way turnaround. you got to build. You know, with how young this team is, this is a good chance to do it. That's the way I see it. Those are my final thoughts on it. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I think you made a really excellent point just about the, the process of turning things around. You, you can't go from non-contender to, you know, hey, we're winning the NBA Finals in one year, typically. As you mentioned, that's why. And this is kind of a funny theme because we've used this example a few times already in this episode. When something is a unique story or an interesting story... It's because it doesn't happen very often, right? We don't talk about like, you know, do you remember the time someone averaged 20 points a game? Like, you know, that happens pretty frequently. It's impressive, yes, but it happens relatively frequency, uh, frequently. But when someone goes, hey, do you remember the time that, you know, uh, you know, some, you know, like even MB, I know he had a terrible playoff outing, but um, people are going to be like, hey, do you remember the time MB went back to back in terms of scoring titles and was the first center to do it in over in about 50 years, right? That's going to be memorable, um, re regardless of the postseason outcome. So um, definitely, definitely something for us uh, to keep an eye on in terms of, uh, you know, what's going on in the league, um, what's going on outside of the Knicks, really, um, and, and, you know, controlling what the Knicks can control, which is the picks they have, the situation they're in, and the roster they have. So with that being said, uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in so much. Uh, you guys have been great support lately. You guys can check out our personal Twitters. They're above our heads. Check out Empire Sports Media for all our New York sports content. We have a bunch of written articles coming out there. Um, and, of course, you guys can check out our Twitter, Instagram, and our TikTok. Um, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or on Spotify, make sure to drop us a five-star rating. I'm Ryan Garcia. That is my co-host and friend, Dylan Backer. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.